just a, another great day, another day that you give us, another day that you even give us, Lord, to even get closer to you and just bring our petitions to you, Father. And we just thank you for each and every person here today, and I pray that you'll bless each and every person, and even, and even myself, God, that our ears will be open to hear your word, hear it more clearly, and even understand the spirit that speaks to us each and every day, trying to lead and guide and direct our lives and to get us closer to you and to a closer understanding of who you are and who we're supposed to even worship and talk to and commune with and spend time with, Father. And I pray that today you'll, you'll help each and every one of our eyes and ears to be open and be receptive to what your word tells us. And I thank you, Father, for that. And I pray again that you just hide me behind that precious cross, God, that the words I speak are of you and not of man. Only of you, Father, and only of your precious blood that your son shed for us on that cross. And you rose him that third day that we can have life eternal with you. And we just praise you and thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, the book of Psalms. Psalms 100. And y'all know this verse, and we're going to look at it. And hopefully we can look at it in just a little different way. Um, just to share with you, I know in the past couple of weeks we've talked about this, the, the Holy Spirit, being able to listen to the Spirit and what the Spirit tells us to do. And I heard a gentleman this week preaching, and he, he was talking about the five senses that we're not supposed to be you know, following the Lord with our five senses, and that is true. In a humanistic way, that is true. But our spiritual senses, and that's what I'm getting at, our spiritual senses, being able to listen to what God tells us and to, to see the things that God shows us. And, and, and I'm talking in the spirit realm. And I'm not talking about looking out there and you see demons and ghosts and stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being able to, to see when God has someone coming up to you and, and you can just sense something in them is different or maybe they're yearning for something and, and they're maybe speaking something and you can hear the Holy Spirit telling you that maybe you need to go talk to them. That's the type of senses I'm talking about. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to convey across. And even, and I just wanted to put that in there. And even, even as we go through Psalms 100, this is another thing that I, I got to thinking about, about uh, our, our being able to listen to the Spirit of God, of what He tries to tell us to do, even the things that He wants us to do. Even, even in a physical way, the, the maybe the way we walk, the maybe the way we uh, just move our hands or, or any, whatever the case may be, the things that we say, the things that we physically can do. I mean, literally, literally the things that we physically can do. Even Psalms 100, it is called the Psalms of Praise is what, what it's called. And even if you go back and do some research and look, you know, everybody thinks that David wrote the entire book of Psalms. Well, he didn't. He didn't do it. So he, did, he wrote some, Solomon wrote some, and even Moses wrote some. And I even shared that with you when I'd done the sermon on Psalms 91. And, and, and the reason I say that, because you can go and look at Psalms 90, and it says, and Moses said this. So, it, it, you know, so there's different ones Mo wrote the book of Psalms, and it, they, nobody actually knows who wrote Psalms 100. But irregardless of whoever wrote it, they, they wanted to tell us something. And even whoever the person wrote it might have been writing it to someone to tell them, look, this is the way we need to praise God. This is the way we need to look at it, or whatever he was trying to get across. But anyway, Psalms 100, starting in verse 1. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is good. He is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Now, the very first one, it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. This word noise, okay, it says make a joyful noise. Now, I want to put this in here. Many people, you know, and, and everybody kind of makes a little fun out of it every now and then. You know, you he, he, hear someone that just flat can't sing. They say, well, they're making a joyful noise. 
Well, you know, that's okay. And they are, they're making a noise. To some people it is a noise. But to them it's singing. Well, in this particular sense, that's what he means, make a noise. And that's what he means. And you may say, well, what does it mean? It's a sound, okay? A noise is a sound. And that, that's what it is. In the Hebrew, it means to shout, raise a sound, even cry out or to give a blast. In the Greek, it, it means a sound or a tone and even a voice. You ever been in a church to where you hear people hollering hallelujah or praise God or thank you Jesus or say an amen? Or even whenever the preacher's speaking, they're basically talking to you know, they just, you know, just preach on, thank you, or whatever. That's really making a noise. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. The Lord wants us to talk to him verbally. He does, not think it. Do you know I just called somebody's name? You didn't even hear it. How do you think God feels? He, put a, he gave us a tongue, he gave us a voice, and he wants us to speak. He wants us to make a noise. He wants us to make a sound. You know, even in Joshua 6 and 20, whenever Joshua took the people over to Jericho, and this is just, just one verse, Joshua, Joshua 6 and 20 says, So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet. So they hollered, they, they shouted, they made a noise. And it says, It came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout. All of these people just, you know, just made a noise. They did. They just made a great noise. And it says the walls fell down flat. Could it have been their sound? Could it have been a noise that they made? Could it have been a sound that they made a joyful noise to the Lord that they were just screaming and shouting because God told them to do something and they did it. And God said, you did what I said and you verbally brought it out. Boom, the walls fell. Could it have been their sound that made the walls fall down? Even in Psalms 91 and 1, it says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of salvation. Make a joyful noise. Do you know over in Genesis, if you want to look over there real quick, real quick, God himself in Genesis chapter 1, and it says uh, in verse 3, and it says, And God said, Let there be light. He spoke it. And even in, in, in verse 6, and it says, And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the heavens. He spoke these things. He spoke it. He didn't just sit up on that great big throne and, throne and think these things. He spoke it into existence. And even down in verse 9 it says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven gather together. And then in verse 11 he says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass. And even in verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament. So he spoke these things. You ever wonder, sometimes, if you're, if you're sitting there, have you ever wondered sometime if God heard your prayers? I mean, you're, you're sitting in your, in your seat and you're thinking your prayers. You ever wonder sometime if he hears them? Sometimes I do. And that's one reason, guys, no joke, this is no joke, I begin speaking my prayers. Verbally speaking it. Driving down the road, going to work. You know, last week I mentioned about cutting your radio off and pray. Pray out loud. If people see you, your mouth doing this, they're just going to think you're singing. So what? You see them doing it. You know, I know one time Betty told me that whenever she would drive to work, folks would look at her like she was crazy because she was just praising God going down the road. That's the way it ought to be. Don't you want people thinking that you're weird for loving God? Shout to him. Talk to him. Have you ever gotten mad at God? You hollered at him then. I, I've done it. How many of us has literally gotten mad at God because of maybe a death or, or something happened in your life or whatever, and you just scream at him? He heard you. He heard your cries. He heard your pleas. So why not talk to him? Why not make a joyful noise to him? Why not say amen or praise God or hallelujah if somebody says anything to you? People hear the things that we speak and we say, and it makes a lasting effect on them. There was a guy at work. There was another fellow that was standing to him, a great, powerful Christian man. Another two <clears throat> boys were over here doing something, and one of them made a comment, and he, he said, Jesus Christ. Now, he was not using this in a polite way. 
okay? And when he said it, I outright said, just right quick, I said, look, brother, if you'll just talk to him and ask him, he'll help you. They don't say it anymore. There's power in your words. There's power in your speech and the things that you say. And people hear it. People hear it. And they understand it. And they listen. You know, David one time in 1 Samuel in chapter 6, and I'm not going to read it, and you'll find this in verse 14 and 15. You know, David one time when they had the Ark of the Covenant, it had been gone, to, they had gotten it. Uh, somebody touched it, God killed him, they put it in a man's house, it stayed there for three or four months, they went and got it, brought it back, okay? So they brought it back, and they were coming through town, and it says in there that David was shouting, shouting praises. In the, I mean, this guy was a king now. Look, the king did not do these things, remember? He's supposed to be a person of, you know, just polite, nobody touched me, you know, I'm, I'm good, and all this type of stuff. Well, the king himself was dancing and shouting and screaming in the streets because God had brought the Ark of the Covenant home. The king was. The king of Jerusalem was doing this. And his wife, his wife, I think her name was Michael or Michelle or something. Anyway, Saul's daughter, remember? So she was up in the window looking down and seeing what the king was doing. And she come up to him and said, hey, man, why are you humiliating yourself and doing all this stuff? You're the king. You're know, not supposed to do this. And he said, I don't care. This is my God. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to scream to him. I'm going to praise him because of who he is. And God punished that woman for what she said to the king, for that man praising him he punished her. She was barren for the rest of her life till the day she died. That's what the Bible says. It's in there. Go read it. But he was shouting. He was the king. Are we not his children? If we're saved and we're saved, we're saved, and we say we're going to heaven, why not give him praise? Do you think that we're actually going to go to heaven and we're going to just sit in a chair and watch TV for eternity? No. We're going to be in front of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who is keeping you from going to hell. So why not praise him now? You've heard me use the word practice. Why not practice now? Because the Bible plainly says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Even our brother, Mr. Hitler, he done it. He hit his knees. He seen him. He laid eyes on him. And he confessed, and his knees bowed, and he bent. Why not praise God now? Why not give him glory now for who he is? And make a noise, even in Psalms 94, 98 and 4, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth, all the earth. Make a joyful noise, make a loud noise, and rejoice and sing praises. And sing praises, give praise to God, even in Revelation 6. The very last book, Revelation 6, and it says this, I saw the Lamb open one of the seals. Talking about Jesus. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. When he opened a book, it made a noise of thunder. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a noise of thunder just by opening a book? The Lamb of God opened it. And this is... This is, we're going to move on to the next one. But I want to encourage you to do something. Everything just about on this earth makes a sound. It does. Just about everything. Listen. Even a piece of paper makes a sound. It makes a noise, some form of a noise. I want you to go look on Google this afternoon. And you pull up NASA, okay, NASA. And you look up where it says, Sounds of the Earth. And listen to it. The earth itself. God created the earth. And listen to the sound that NASA has found. That even in outer space. Our planet makes a noise. It's really cool. It really is. I thought it was really sharp. Go look at it. If I had it up here I'd let you listen to it. But I don't. But go look at it. The noise. The sounds that we make to God. The noise that we make to God. And it can be even singing. Even verse 2, it says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. This word serve, it means to work. 
And every, every, you know, the majority of us yesterday got a good taste of it. Out in the heat, we were out there working and we were doing things for the Lord. Somebody wanted to do a charitable thing for other children, this type of stuff, and we volunteered and done these things. And poor brother out there, he had to go cut firewood. So bless his heart. <laughs> I don't like it that him. But anyway, you, we were serving God. We were doing things, whether it be that or whether it be, do, be doing anything else, whether it be preaching, singing, or teaching Sunday school, whatever the case may be, you're serving God. You're doing work. But do you know that also the word serve means to worship? To worship. If serve means to work, have you ever really worked to worship God? I mean worked to worship God. Have you ever not felt the Spirit of God in you? I remember one time, I'll give you an example. I, we, a group of us went to the Dominican Republic. This was several years ago. And we went down there, and on the way down there, every one of us, every one of us in our group just, just felt troubled for some reason. It just every one of us, we talked, man, do you feel something wrong? Do, something's missing? Something's not right this time? This trip is different that time? You know, just, we went on and on. And this went on for a couple of days, and we was constantly praying. We'd get together and we'd pray, Lord, what is it? What's going on? And we went to a service. We went to a service, and I was, it was a Spanish service. We went there, and we, you know, you, and for some reason, the Spirit can, can, can let you hear these things. I'm telling you guys, it's real. You can hear a Spanish song and just about understand every word they're saying. But anyway, we're all were there, and we're sitting in the back of the room, a little small room about this size, and there were probably 75 to 100 people in it. And we were back there, and every one of us, we began to pray. They were singing songs, and every one of us began to raise our hands and just, just sit there and stand in there. And every one of us, just tears were flowing down our faces. And all of us, and we could want, And the reason I can say this is because once we got finished and went back to the room, we were all sharing what was happening to us, and every one of us was praying, where are you? Why are you not with us this time? He wanted us to work for him, not physically go out and work for, work for him. Do you want me? Worship me. Put forth some effort if you want my presence in your life. And after that night, it changed. Because we went after him. We worked. We wanted him. We wanted to show him that we worshiped him and served him. Even in 1 Samuel 12 and 24, it says, Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth. In truth. Don't let people tell you it don't take that to worship God. He wants our worship. He, he inhabits our worship. He wants us to strive to worship Him and serve Him. And that's what it means. Deuteronomy 13 and 4 says, You shall walk after the Lord your God. Walk after Him, not behind Him. Walk after Him. Go after Him. Seek Him. Look for Him. It says, With all your heart. I'm sorry, with and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him. And then it turns around and says, and cleave him. Cleave unto him, which means join yourself with him. Join together. Be one with the Father. That's how you serve him. That's how you become a servant. That's showing you, you want to worship him. And even in Matthew 6 and 24, it says, No man can serve two masters, and y'all know this. It says, For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And I know everybody says, Well, that means money. Not, it, yes, it does. But, friends, you still can't serve two masters. You cannot serve flesh and God. You cannot do it, because if you're wanting flesh, you're still wanting money. You got to want him. You got to serve him. You got to strive for him. You got to work for him. You got to do this. And I don't mean going out and doing works for your salvation. I don't mean that. I'm talking about the fact when you feel empty, you don't have him, and you want more of him, and you want to feel him, then that's where we put forth that effort of work to strive. Just like I was mentioning about making a noise, shouting to him, praising him, Telling him thank you, telling him amen, and letting people and others of the world show or see what you are, see who you are, see who your king is. And that's what he wants. Think of David. I mean, even the king himself.
going through the streets, and I can picture this man, ever how old he was at the time, doing cartwheels and dancing. And look, it even says in there, and you go and read it, it even says in there that he was taking his robe off, the kingly robe, he was throwing it on the ground in front of the Father. He was serving him. He was working for him. He was work, worshiping him. And you know one thing, every one of us, even myself, we need to come to a greater understanding, friends, that it is a privilege to serve God. It's a privilege. Because if he spoke things into existence, he can speak things out of existence. He has that power. And I don't think really deep down inside of each and every one of us, we don't have that realization of who he truly is and what he truly is. So maybe we all need to come to a greater understanding. It's a privilege to serve him and even to worship him. Even to worship him. Even to do the things that he says. And it says again, going on, it says, come before his presence with singing. You know, we just sing a song. Have you ever sang or went to singing a song, a, a, you know, a, a gospel song or, or a hymn song or whatever the case may be, and you're in a service and you begin to sing, and, and, and you're singing, I mean, just with all of your being. To you, there's no one else around, only you. And you can feel the presence of God coming inside of you because he's finally seen your heart. And then all of a sudden, while you're singing this song, your eyes close and tears begin to flow. Because you have finally reached the presence of God. You have come into his presence with singing. And I mean come into his presence to where you can just about literally feel him reaching out and touching you on your shoulder. Saying, you keep singing. You keep making that noise. This is what I want to hear coming from you. And that's what he wants. Come into his presence with singing. Sing to him. Sing great songs to him. Whether or not you feel like you can sing or not. And I'm going to throw this in there. And I said I wouldn't, but I am. You know, many people say, well, I can't sing. I can't sing. And well, I understand that. I can't either. But I said, I'm going to do it. I just like it. I like music. I remember years ago, and I'm talking 30 some odd years ago. There was one time, this, this great man, he, he was a great friend. He's done passed on and went to, with the Lord. We was in what was called then the training union class, okay, if any of y'all ever remember that. We was in there, and we were sitting around, and, and the gentleman who was the teacher, he said, okay, well, let's open up with, no, he said, let's close with prayer. So he asked my friend to say the closing prayer. So he did. Now, this dude, he was a big old fellow. He was big huge guy man he was just and his hands looked like gorilla hands I mean this dude was huge but he had a heart it was unreal and when he spoke I mean he spoke like a bear but when he prayed he prayed like a lamb he did and you could barely hear him I mean his voice just it's like it just went down to nothing and there was this lady sitting beside him when he said amen she said you know I couldn't hear a word you said and you know, it broke that man's heart. It did. And look, I mean, immediately I spoke up and I said, look, he wasn't talking to you to start with. Friends, when you sing, don't sing to somebody. You sing to God. Whether you sound like a billy goat, you sing to the Father. Don't worry about what the world says. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. If somebody says something to you, friends, they're not thinking about the same Father you're thinking about. Because we're supposed to praise Him and we're supposed to worship Him and we're supposed to sing to Him. In Matthew 21 and 8, and it, this was <clears throat> when Jesus was coming through the city and says, And a great multitude spread their garments in the way and, and, and cut down branches of trees and strawed them, strode them, in the way, and the multitudes went before, and they followed. They were following Jesus. Y'all remember, he was on the donkey going through the town. And he said, they followed and cried. This word cried means singing in this particular sense. 
singing, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They were singing and they were shouting and they were just crying this out, just crying it out, making a joyful noise. And not only that, you remember Paul and Silas? Whenever Paul and Silas, they had done something, they got thrown in jail. And they were in jail. And this, these two particular verses in Acts, Acts 16 and starting at 25, it says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas, they were in jail. And I'm going to stop there just a minute. I want to kind of remind you about jails during this particular time. They didn't have three hots and a cot and a big screen TV and a weight room. They didn't have those things. It was dark. They had no electricity. If you felt something tickling you on the foot during the night, it was probably something looking for something to eat. And that's what it was. Their company were probably mice. Their bed was probably made out of pine straw if they got fortunate enough to do it. And, I, and even history says that even people in prisons, if they got something to eat, their family had to bring it to them. They weren't fed. The government didn't feed them. You went to prison because you'd done something wrong, and that's where you was going to die. And they weren't going to take care of you. And it was dark. Even this particular time, it was dark. If you go and read the rest of it, it says and at midnight, so it was dark. And Paul and Silas, and it says they were praying. And they prayed. These two men at midnight, they were praying. And it says, and they sang praises unto God. These two men, they were in chains. They were in prison, knowing the outcome of what jails were. And they were singing praises to God in a prison praying and singing praises to God. And it was midnight, and it says, And the prisoners heard them. Even the other prisoners heard them singing and praying. And it says, all of, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. Everybody, every prisoner in the jail, their chains fell off. Remember the song, My Chains Are Gone? How many times have you ever seen that within your heart? Our chains are gone. <clears throat> can, you, <clears throat> can you imagine singing praises to God so deep with inside of yourself that he reaches down, like I said, and he touched you? Have you ever sang the song that says he touched me? Did he? Or are you just singing a song? Or are you just singing any song? If you sing a song, he touched me, then you don't, don't you want to touch? Don't you want to feel him touch you? If, he ch if you sing the song, my chains are gone, are you still dragging them? Are you still toting those chains? If you sing the song, sweet, sweet Jesus, is he sweet to you? Or are you just singing a song? Sing praises. Sing praises to the Father. Sing praises to who he is. Shout, Hosanna, make a noise. Come into his presence. And that's what we're supposed to do. That's the way we're supposed to do it. And then in verse 3 it says this. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. This word know. Do you know him? Do you truly know who he is? This word knows means to find out. That's what that word means. If you want to know something, then you've got to find out what it is. It also means to discern. Remember, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. To discern. To know, which means to find out, and also means to discern. This word discern means to recognize something. Have you ever gotten to the point to where you can recognize when God's trying to tell you something or talk to you? Have you ever gotten to the point to where you're in a worship service or you're driving down a road listening to a song and the Spirit says, just shout. Just say hallelujah. Just say it. And you don't do it. Have you gotten to that point to where you know these things? Do you truly know God? Do we truly know who he is? Do we truly discern him? And this wor word recognize also means you, can you identify who he is? Can you identify whenever God truly moves in your heart? Can you identify him to whenever he wants you to shout? Can you identify whenever you're in the middle of a of a worship service and you're singing a song and he just wants you to close your eyes and just reach and grab him. Whenever he says, reach for me. Just reach for me. I'm here. My hand's here. Just grab it. Just grab it. And have you ever reached into the heavens, my friend, and felt his hand? 
and felt him reach and actually touch you. When you sing the song, oh, he touched me. Have you done it? Do you know when he tells you to do these things? Even in Isaiah 45 and 5, it says, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, even though you have not known me. Even though you ain't known me. Even in Psalms 46 and 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And this word exalted means to be held in a high regard. In a high regard. But I'm going to add this in there, in that particular definition where it says in a high regard. We're supposed to hold our Father in a higher regard. Higher above anything else or anybody else. He said, I am God. I am the only God. I am the true God. I am the living God. And no one will be above me. Can you imagine? Think of those things. No one, no, nothing will ever be above me is what God said. So if that is the case, do we not want to talk to him? And not just think about it, but to talk to him. Verbally talk to him. And verbally sing to him and sing praises to him and thank him and just feel his presence and want to be in his presence. This psalm is a psalm of praise. A psalm of praise. Do we truly praise him like we're supposed to? And it goes on, it says, It is he that made us, and we not our, and not we ourselves. So we didn't make ourselves. We are his people. In Proverbs 16 and 4, it says, And the Lord hath made all things for himself. He made everything for himself. Think about that. Everything. Everything is made for God. All things are made for himself. Yea, even the wicked. Even the wicked. For the day of evil. He made it. He made it all, friends. Every bit of it. He made the hair on your head. He made the clothes on your body. He made these pews. He made all things for him. So if he made all things for him, should that not put something else within our mind and even in the depths of our spirit that this being, this person, this God, that we should be worshiping him. He made it all. He made everything. Should we not be truly, truly, truly worshiping him and looking at who he is and what he is and even in Colossians 1 and 15, it says, Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. <clears throat> Listen, for by him all things were created. By him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Did we have, have we not been talking about the Spirit do you see it? It's, in, it's invisible. Basically to us it is invisible. We don't see it. Do you see the one sitting here on the front row? He made all things that are visible and invisible. If that is the case, then don't we want to worship him? Don't we want to sing praises to him? Don't we want to talk to him out loud? Don't we want to speak to him? And even this verse goes on visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. For him. So we were made, we were made to worship God. That's what we were made for. We were made for him, not puppets. But we were made to worship him. We were made for him. We were created by him. And even in Isaiah 43 and 7 says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. We were made for his glory. 
And how can that be? By letting people see God in us. By letting people see not so much as that God is in us. That is true. They are supposed to see these things. But how do we give evidence of that? By the way we present ourselves. If a great thing comes along, have you ever been at work or out playing or with, a, with an old friend that maybe don't even go to church and something happened and you say, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, for what you did? Or do you say, man, that's cool. Do you give praise to God or you just turn to the earthly old verbal way? Do you say thank you, Jesus, in front of the people that you don't even know? Or whenever you get to the cash register and you hand them your little Kroger card and they knock off about 70 bucks off of it, do you say thank you, Jesus, or oh, goodness, that's nice? Which one do you say? Do you let people hear the God that you worship, or do you stand there and say hope and pray that they see Jesus in you? If you want them to see it, then bring him to life. Let them see it. Let them hear it. Let them know that he is in you. How do you do this? By making a joyful noise. Let the sound come out. That's what that means. And even walking through the store, do you sing praises? Do you sing? Or even outside or anywhere? Do people hear and see God in you? Is that, that's what we're supposed to do. But because we were created for his glory. So if we're created for his glory, then we're supposed to be giving him glory all the time. All the time and all the things that we do. And it goes on and says, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. So he's made all of us, every one of us. He created every one of us. And it goes on and it says, and the sheep of his pasture. Can you imagine the pasture that God has? <clears throat> Can you imagine have you ever been past a field that was so plush and green? And you stand there and you think, you know, man, a cow would love that. Just beautiful green plush. It's the same way with Jesus. Friends, I can share. The more praise and glory you give to God and lifting his name up and verbally shouting and even driving down the road and you're singing, people even thinking you're nuts. And you're singing to God or you're praying to God or whatever the case may be, it will bring life to your soul. It will begin healing on the inside and that's the pasture. That's the glorious feeling inside that God is saying, you, 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 you found it. You know what I'm talking about. Don't just think it. Tell me. Do it. Give me praise. Give me the worship that I deserve. And I'll give you the pasture. If you're my sheep, then go for the pasture. You ever sometimes we're, we get the blues or get bogged down and all this type of stuff? Are you in a green pasture then? No. Then go to the pasture. He even says that he gives us a way out of even temptation. Don't you think he would give us a way to the pasture? To that green and glorious thing that he can give us. We are his sheep. And even in Psalms 95 and 7, it says, For he is our God, <clears throat> and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear my voice. See, another condition. Listen to him. Listen to the spirit that dwells with inside of you. Remember me telling you that if, 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 we're, if we're Christians and we turn our life over to the Lord and the Lord lives with inside of us, the Holy Spirit, then it tells us what we need to do. How many times have you ever been in a slump and you feel something inside of you saying, just praise me, thank me, pray, come to me, talk to me, let me fix this. But yet, on the other hand, us as humans, we try to fix it ourselves. That's not listening to the Holy Spirit. That's not letting him tell us what to do today if you will hear his voice. So he tells us what we need to do. He tells us how to get back to this green pasture that he speaks of. <clears throat> he tells us all of these things. He tells us how to do it. And even Jesus said in John 10 and 27, he says, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. So we got to listen. We've got to pay attention to that spirit that I've been talking about for the past two weeks. <clears throat> and imagine, just imagine, 
and what kind of pasture God has. Truly imagine, and I'm not talking about a place to where we go and act like animals and graze in the grass. I'm talking in the spirit. The peace and the joy and the happiness that he can give us. A new level of glory that we can step up into if we would just change if if we would just change our attitude of worship and how we praise our God and praise the God that created us and made us for his glory I know one time or several times Lisa and myself will go to different things sometimes a preacher's got to be preached to okay you know the only time I get preaching is at home, but that's, you know, a different type. But anyway, sometimes a preacher's got to be preached to, so sometimes I go to different things, and that's during the middle of the week or on a Saturday or something like that. And one time we went to one, and uh, we got there, and, you know, we were just doing the normal socializing business and that type of stuff. Time come around for the service to start, Okay. The person that played the piano got up there and went to play it on the piano, you know, and and then somebody else got up there and they went to sing. And so both of them went to sing. And next thing you know, a couple of folks were standing up and they began to clap and, and they began to sing. And hey, look, folks are still socializing, you know, and, and the church started. I mean, <laughs> it was it was something. Next thing you know, everybody is singing, praising God. You know, nothing unusual. You know, folks lifting their hands. Some folks were, you know, just, they'd say hallelujah right in the middle of service. And friends, this went on for an hour. An hour. Nothing but singing and praising God before the person ever got up and spoke. Me, I didn't want it to stop. To me, I was having church. It's amazing. One of these days, we're going to shock y'all, and we're going to have about 10 or 15 songs, and then I'm going to preach. Praising God, worshiping Him, that's worship. That's worship. That's loving and praising the Creator of who created you and who has the power and authority over all the universe of everything that is ever created, everything that you can lay your eyes on, just like the scripture says, visible and invisible, he made it. And he created it for him. If that's the case, every one of us should be on our knees praising him. And even John 10 and 9, it says, Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Go in and out, find pasture. Everywhere you look can be grand green grass. And that's in Jesus. Remember, this is a psalm of praise telling us how we're supposed to praise him. And then the other one, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. And it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving in the, in the, in the temple in the temple, you, had, you could enter in, and there was a court, and there, there was a gate, basically, a door. That's what gate is. A gate is nothing but a door or a portal, a way in, access to, is what it is. And you would go in, and you could go into the court, but you couldn't go into the Holy of Holies, okay? That's where God was, so you couldn't go in. So you enter through the gate, okay? You come in, just like coming into the church, you come in the door with thanksgiving. You're giving thanks, Okay? It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Psalms 136 and 1, it says, Oh, give thanks to God, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to God, of God's. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endures forever. So when you walk in, you give thanks to him. You thank him for allowing you to be able to come in to his presence. And that's what, that's what basically means. There's a door. There is a door that we can get to God. There's access, basically access. Okay, you have access to God. So if you're going to come into his presence and you can come through his gate or his door, you're supposed to give him thanks. 
You ever wonder why? You ever wonder why? Why should I give thanks to him each time I come into his presence? Because it's a privilege. He has given you the privilege to come into his presence. So you ought to be giving thanks. We ought to be giving thanks. We ought to be on our knees giving thanks to him. It's a privilege to come into his presence, to come through his gate. And then not only that, but when you come through the gate, you go into his courts. Okay, now this isn't a court of law. This is like an opening, a room. So basically you come through the door of the church, you give thanks to God. And I'm not saying this is what we're supposed to do, but I'm talking about getting into his presence. When you come through the gate that he allowed, you come into his presence and you give him you give him thanks for allowing you to have the privilege to come into his presence, and then you turn around and give him praise. Basically, you're supposed to get on your knees before the Father and give him praise and thank him from the depths of your being. And you turn around and give him singing, and then you turn around and begin shouting praises of joyful noises to him. Hallelujah, praise your name. Thank you for being my king, and on and on and on, and anything else that the Holy Spirit puts inside of you to tell him. And that's the way it's supposed to be. You come in through his gates with thanksgiving. You come into his courts with praise. You come into his house. You've come into his room. You've come into his presence. And then we're supposed to be thankful and bless his name. Do you know how to bless God's name? Do you know how to bless him? You bless him with your praise. Blessed be your name. Higher is your name than any other place. The glory of your being is in me. And I give you thanks and I give you praise and thank you for the privilege. And just on and on and on, you're blessing his holy name of who he is. And you're giving him praise. And you're thanking him for allowing you to come into his presence through the gate. Through the gate that not everybody gets to go through. But not only go through his gate, but you've come into his room to where he exists. And you've given him praise. And you're blessing his holy name. Bless you, my father. Bless you among all the gods that are in the world. But yet you're the only true God. You are the one. And I mean, it can just go on and on and on. And even in Luke 19 and 38, the disciples one time, Jesus, Jesus was doing something and the, the, the disciples were there. Okay? And, and let me just read it. <laughs> It'd be the simplest thing. The, the disciples were there and this is what happened. And they were saying this. He said, Blessed be the king that comes in the name of the Lord. So they were just giving him praise. The disciples were doing this. And then it goes on, peace in heaven. And this is what they were saying. It said, blessed be the king that comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So they were just magnifying Jesus. I mean, just bringing him just to higher and higher. They was exalting him. Okay, That's what they were doing. Saying, blessed be the king that comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And then it turns around and says, and some of the Pharisees. From among the multitude said to him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Basically tell them to shut up. And this is what Jesus told them. He said, and he answered and said unto them, I tell you, this is what Jesus said, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Don't be a rock. Let's don't be a rock. If Jesus had told them people to shut up, like the Pharisees said, the stones would have jumped up and went to praising God. That's what that means. And when I read this, I said, Lord, don't, don't let me be a rock. Don't make me one of those rocks. You come inside of me, give me the courage. Give me the boldness that I need that when I come around people, they not only can physically see Jesus in me, but they can hear him. Let me not be scared to say praise God for what you've done. Let me not be scared to whenever I go to Kroger and get this chunk of money knocked off my grocery bill, I thank Jesus instead of that woman who slid the little card. 
or you say different things like that. That is bringing praise to God. And that's what He wants us to be. Let's don't be a rock. Let's don't be the ones that the Pharisees tried to quieten down. Let's give praise to where it's due, which is Him, just like these Pharisees, and blessed His name and said He was a peace in heaven and a glory in the highest of who He truly is, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we just read Psalms 100. Remember, it says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord. A noise, shout to him, shout different praises to him. And not only that, it says in all the land. You know, and I thought about this, and I know everybody says, well, the whole earth is supposed to do this. How many places have you ever traveled? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. It makes me wonder sometimes the different places that we go to, which is different lands, and we're representatives to him, and do we shout? those joyful noise do people hear those things do we serve the Lord with gladness even though it was hot yesterday and it was tough especially for a one long fellow but you know I was glad to do it I was I, I, I enjoyed it I really did I knew it was going to be hot when I got out of bed and I'm not putting myself on a pedestal but were we glad to do it were we thankful that God gave us the privilege to go and hear these people speak yesterday or, or, or cook or, or serve or go and gather or whatever the case may be? Serve the Lord with gladness. Make it Him and even shout. Give those praises. Come in His presence with singing. Whenever we go to sing a song here in the church, do we try to get in His presence or are we just mouthing off a bunch of words? Do we truly seek His presence when we sing? Do we truly put forth those things and look for him? And do we truly know him? It says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. Do we truly know him like we're supposed to know him? If we know him, and, and I've even thought about this, if we truly know God the way we're supposed to know him, won't we be doing those things? Wouldn't we really be doing more of those things? making joyful noises, singing, coming into his presence, looking for his presence. And it goes on, it says that he made us. Have we really gave any great depth of being a thought of that? He truly, honestly made us. And just like the verses I read, and he made us for him. Made us for him. For his glory. Everything, he made it all. And we're his people. The sheep of his pasture. We're his people, so if we're his people and we're grazing in his glorious pasture that he gives, don't we want to praise him and worship him like the scripture tells us to do? Don't we want to do these things? And even whenever we come through his gates with thanksgiving, do we truly give him thanks for another opportunity to get closer? Do you ever give him thanks when you come into the church or come into his presence and give him thanks for another opportunity that you have had to come and say, Father, forgive me for what I did today? Do we truly give him thanks? And even whenever we come into his courts, whenever we come into his courts with praise, when you come into his courts, do we give him praise? Do we truly give him the praise that he deserves? Or in our heads do we say praise God? Or do we show him our praise through a verbal noise and through singing? And then it goes on. Do we even bless his name? Do we truly bless his name for who he is? And it goes on, it says, for the Lord is good. We all know that. Every one of us know that the Lord has been truly good to us. We have truly been blessed by God. We truly have. And the verse, this very last verse, it goes on. And it says, his mercy is everlasting. His mercy is everlasting. It doesn't stop. He has mercy on every one of us each and every day. And by, the, by that, we should go by all the way back up to verse 1 and start over. Just by his mercy that he gives us every day. And not only that, and his truth endure to all generations. It does not end. None of this ends. Even in glory. The Bible plainly says that there's angels that never, ever stop giving praise to God. 
just a group of angels that never has ever stopped giving glory to God. Never stopped. It says they do it day and night. It never stops. And it makes me wonder sometimes, <clears throat> you know, am I going to get to heaven and I'm just going to sit in a chair and look at TV for eternity? Or am I going to be the one who's going to be up there praising him, thanking him? Can you imagine the day that you, I guess, well, how would you say it? Uh, after you die, you wake up in heaven and be in his presence. You ever wonder what it's going to feel like when all of these angels and even others that's gone before and they're, they're just doing nothing but just praising God at the foot of Jesus, at the foot of the Lamb, the one who died on that cross that was beaten unmercifully for us. And everyone is praising God. And all of a sudden, there you are standing saying, man, why didn't I practice? Why didn't I practice doing this? The Bible told me to praise Him. I didn't understand who He truly was. You ever wonder what it'll be like Remember that song, I Can Only Imagine? Have you ever sang that song and truly let it go into the depth of your being? They sang that song at my daddy's funeral, the first time I ever heard it, and I'll never forget it. I'll only imagine what it'll be like to be standing at his feet. I can only imagine. Try to imagine what it would be like to be in his presence, the true presence. And like I said, I wondered myself when I get there if I will say if I had only practiced just a little bit more, if I had only raised my hands or shouted hallelujah or sang a greater, harder song so that it would go into the depths of my being or come into his courts with thanksgiving and more praise. I can only imagine. But he told us to do it. So maybe in some way, Psalms 100 will have a different.